Hey what's up guys, Lucas here and welcome to today's video. Today I am going to be showing you guys how to draw a stylized portrait from scratch using my new pack of brushes, the LP Painting Brushes. If you're watching this and you don't have the pack of brushes, you can get those in the link in my description if you're watching this on YouTube or you can get them in anywhere on my links or on my website lucaspainador.com. Um, if you're watching this because you already have the brushes and you are watching um, to learn how to use the brushes, then congratulations on getting the brushes. Thank you very much for the support and I hope that you find this video nice and instructive. And please feel free to follow along with the process with these same images or with your own set of images so that you can come up with your own stylized portrait. So let's go and get started. I'm going to be painting a portrait of this individual. I am not exactly sure who this character is. Looks like it's a show, a movie or something similar. If you have the name of this person, please feel free to let me know who this person is. But it doesn't really matter who the person is. What we are going to try and accomplish is make a stylized version of whichever of these photos. For now, the one that attracts me the most is this one right here, simply because you have a direction of light on this side that makes the, um, the image a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more striking. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. But the reason why I have several of those pictures in here is because I want to first warm up. This is a part of the process that you normally don't get to see because I usually warm up before starting a video. But in this case, I thought it would be very nice to just show you guys that, you know, even at, at doing something that is very much in my comfort zone, like a portrait, I still take the time to warm up properly. So let's go and get and get started. We are not gonna be necessarily looking for capturing the resemblance of this person but we want to have at least some of the character in there. So one of the first things that you can do if you are very cold and you need to start your painting is to trace over whatever reference you have. It is something that a lot of artists shy away from, but I find it very, very valuable, at least at the start to capture some proportions and know exactly like, what are you going to be doing? So for this initial part of the process, my favorite uh, drawing brush from the set is this fine translucent brush. I like to use this one because it has some translucency. That means I get to make wrong lines without having to worry too much. I, I don't have to commit to a line all the way from the start. I can simply, you know, go at it softly with the pen pressure and I can slowly find my way through the painting. So as you can see, the first thing that I'm doing is just trying to find where the big lines of this portrait are going to be. So here's the eye and then the shape for the head right there. Okay, something simple. If there is something that I like about this portrait is the angle shape of the nose. That is something that I would like to to capture. And here are the lips that I'm gonna have to increase the opacity of the layer so that I can see exactly what is happening with those lips. And of course the beard. We're gonna have some fun trying to paint that beard on a painterly style. I think that we're gonna go for a more painterly style since of course we're gonna be using the painting brushes. So there you go, that is a very quick trace and that is going to really help us to warm up our hand. So now that we have this, let's go and maybe study the other references. Quite a terrible drawing, but that is the point. This is the place where we can have the freedom of just doing whatever messy lines we want without having any type of remorse, any type of um, fear that they're gonna come out ugly. Let's change the brush and see what happens. I'm gonna try, and try to draw now with this fine gouache. It's uh, the second one that I really like for drawing in this pack. 
because again it has a bit of that translucency just that as you can see this one has a lot more texture so if you are looking for more refined lines you might not want to use this one right here but since we are on the again messy stage of the drawing we can do all them as we want and right now for the eraser i am using the airbrush right here you don't have to use the airbrush for the sketching part i like using the airbrush because as you can see here it lets me still see parts of the sketch so i don't have to restart every single time As you can see there is already some stylization happening because it is um, a bit un unavoidable when i see something like his head being very triangular down here on his chin i cannot avoid to really exaggerate that triangle right here i would say even that sometimes when you don't exaggerate and when you don't try to stylize whatever you're drawing a lot of times you fall short so a mistake that they see a lot of artists doing is that they see those shapes in their drawings they see that this character for example or this reference is a very strong triangle down here in his chin and then you try to minimize it or make it a bit realistic and then you fall short you do something that looks a little bit more like this i would say that to avoid falling short and to make sure that you actually make something that looks like the reference you want to exaggerate your drawing so that you actually get closer to reality at least that is my personal experience okay so let's try another brush now and in this case we're gonna try maybe something like this fine messy this is not my favorite pen for drawing because it has a lot of opacity and that means that i cannot make mistakes it is more suitable for let's say painting or inking but we can give it a try. I'm gonna put my reference down here and let's see what we can do. Okay, so now I would say after what has it been, I think 17 minutes, yes, since we started drawing, I feel like my hand is loose and I can risk going for a more finished painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these other references. I'm going to make this one right here bigger because this is the one that I'm going to be using for the stylist portrait. And now I'm going to create a new layer and in this one, I am gonna start drawing. Now, this is what I'm. This size that you're currently seeing right now is a hundred percent of my canvas right now. Just for you to know, the canvas is three thousand six hundred by two thousand one hundred. The resolution doesn't matter. This is this is a myth that a lot of people believe that it matters in digital media. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you change this thing into seventy-two, or if you put it in three hundred, or if you put it in twelve. It is not going to change the size of your canvas. As you can see, it doesn't change it at all. What matters is the size of the pixels because this is what you're going to end up turning into a higher or less uh, or smaller resolution illustration. So doesn't matter. Just going to click this button right here, put it back in 72, click resample, 
and put it in pixels and this is the measurement that actually matters so there you go i'm gonna be making a portrait in the area of around 1300 by 2000 pixels that is the space that i'm gonna be drawing in right here to the right and probably i'm gonna be making the illustration bigger as i go but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, again, the fine translucent one, since it's the one that I like the most. And I'm going to start trying to make uh, a stylized portrait of this guy. So something a bit more loose than the drawing that we had before. So what you see me here is trying to exaggerate some of the shapes. I don't know how exaggerated the portrait will be at the end, but for example, right here I'm stretching the jaw to make it even more pronounced, and here I'm stretching the cheekbone even though it is not that pronounced in his face. And remember that even though this is a stylized portrait, you don't have to limit that stylization just to the head of the character. You can do things like stylizing the clothing so that it follows a simpler silhouette. And that is completely fine. You can do this with the colors, with the background, with the values and everything that you want. A lot of the science of stylization is simply grabbing things and simplifying them. It is just looking at, for example, the shape that he has right here on his mustache. And instead of just imagining that this is just a bunch of little hairs that go down and do very complex things, just see a single line that crosses from side to side. There are other things that you can do with stylization, but mainly it is that. The eyes, of course, are the most important part of the whole portrait. So right now I'm trying to decide what size to do for the pupil or the iris. I forget what, what the name is, but the center, the dark part of the eye. It is very important that we are consistent across the portrait on the level of stylization. So if we do something like making a very tiny iris, this is going to make my whole portrait much more stylized than if I try to do something closer to the photo. So I have to make that decision, but I am not ready yet to make it. So I'm going to continue working on other parts of the portrait until I can come back to the eyes and make that final decision. When drawing things like this fade of the hair where you don't know exactly where to make the line, what I prefer to do when I am going to have something that is painterly and not completely defined like an ink drawing, I prefer to just suggest the featheriness or the transition of the hair with a few lines that make it a bit more realistic than just coming in here and making a single line right here. I have done a lot of work on this side of the portrait, so something that normally I do throughout the process more often than this is to flip the canvas, but I am going to do it right now and that will help me to see any mistakes that I have around my portrait.
I don't feel like I am capturing the intensity that he has on the ice. So something that I'm going to try is to open the ice a little bit more and see a more crazy look in his face. And for that, I can actually use what I was thinking before and make a smaller pupil in his eye. I think I found what is the thing that I was missing in the eyes and it is that the character is squinting a little bit. You can see that his lower eyelid is a tiny bit up and that can make or break the expression of the character. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this eyelid a little bit higher until it touches. There you go, something like this, and then I'm gonna make a wrinkle for the lower eyelid. And that should make a difference. Just that now, because of what I did, it feels like this eye is a bit higher than the other one. So let me just flip the canvas and make sure that these eyes are correct. The eyes are really the most key piece of the whole portrait, so it is worth spending some time just making sure that they are okay. You can see that now I switch my eraser to this LP Round Creamy. The reason why I switched it is because now all the lines are really close to their final position and what I want to do is make my drawing clean. I don't want to have a drawing that has a bunch of layers in here that will make my painting harder to do. I want clean, easy to paint lines. We are very close to be able to start with the painting, but what I want to do now is give my portrait a liquify. So I'm gonna go in here in Photoshop, liquify, and I'm gonna try to fix this portrait to make sure that it looks as appealing and close to the reference as possible. You see here is the difference from before and after is nothing very big but I like the character now a tiny bit more. Unfortunately the portrait is not coming out as stylized as I would like it to come but we can still work with stylization with the colors and other things like that. Okay so now that we have our drawing ready to start with a painting let's make the canvas just a tiny bit bigger so that we don't have the drawing right against the borders of the canvas. I'm gonna move the drawing just a couple of spaces here, give it some room so that I can make a backdrop painting and put some color right here in the canvas. One of my favorite brushes out of the whole pack is this dry knife brush. I really really like how you can use it to create masks and it leaves you that nice bit of texture in the background so that you can see some transparency in the colors. So I can use just this dry knife from the start to the end of the painting, but because I want to show you some more brushes, 
we're gonna use some other ones also for this mask okay so let's try first maybe with a dry block making that mask what i'm gonna do now is try to make a silhouette that contains the shape of the character I am making this layer right below the line art and it doesn't matter which color we choose for now. We're gonna play with the colors in a moment. Now that we have the background for the silhouette of our character, we can make another layer under it and we can play a little bit with the texture or the color for the backdrop. For this, I'm gonna choose a very saturated color and maybe a brush like the LP Dry Flat so that we can have a lot of texture. And I'm gonna use the eraser with the same brush, this LP Dry Flat, so that we can eliminate parts of that silhouette. To make the background more interesting, I'm gonna create a new layer, go down to the textures section, and I'm gonna select something that will give me some interesting color variation, like for example, this LP texture impasto. I'm gonna clip this mask to the original, and I'm gonna start putting some color variation right here in the background. Now that we have this original base for the whole painting, I can create a new layer and clip it also to this one and start painting the actual colors that we see in the reference. For this part, it doesn't really matter which brush you use, but I want something that still has a lot of texture. So maybe I'm gonna go with this dry square. You see that I'm putting colors in the background, but I'm not worrying with matching exactly the perfect color from the reference. I'm just trying to put some colors that will give me a similar mood. And I am making sure to not use the full opacity of the brush so that my colors layer one with the other. You can see that now, because of that, we have some transparency in the colors. This green that is on top of the reds lets still some of the little dots of red come out through the color and that makes the colors much more interesting. Something that I definitely don't want is the white of the canvas just peeking through. So I'm just gonna choose something that is very similar to the white, but I'm gonna cover all of those dots with this cream color. This is something that I am painting behind everything. And now that I have all the layers, I can just grab the three that make the background and fuse them together. Let's go now and start talking about the character. As you can see, we're gonna do something very similar than with the background. I have the silhouette of the character. I'm gonna clip one more layer to it. And then I am going to select another brush again from the texture section, like for example, these texture dots. And I'm gonna start applying some random colors over the whole character. Now I'm gonna use the texture fur to cover more area. After I have this, I can fuse those two layers into one single one and we can start painting the actual colors of our character. I am really a big fan of this dry knife, so I think I'm gonna use this one for those base colors. You can see that I am using it to paint over this whole layer of crazy colors that we had before, but I am not painting with full opacity. I am letting those oranges come out through the color of the skin. I 
I am not separating all of these colors into individu individual layers because I want the colors to mix organically. And check out also that I am not painting the shadows of the objects because you can see that this jacket right here can get very, very dark. So I'm not doing that right here. I'm painting kind of like a local color of the object. Like if this would be uh, a scenario in which the whole character is, is, is illuminated by a, by a very uniform light. I'm trying to find that color and paint it. We have almost all the colors. I am just going to make one more layer and I'm going to paint the hair and the beard in that layer. The reason why I'm separating this color right here is because I don't want to mess up all the other colors. And I'm gonna use this same layer for the eyebrows and maybe even for the eyes. Something else that we can make in our character so that it, it stands out and it looks a little bit better is add some color variation for the skin of the character. Now, I'm sure that you have heard that skin changes color depending on the area of the face so for example right here in the middle of the face we usually have a more reddish tint in our faces while up here we tend to have something that is more yellow and down on the lower part of the of the face we have something that is desaturated and colder so we can add a, a very subtle version of those tones of color still more exaggerated than in real life because this is part of the stylization but for this part i think i'm going to change to the airbrush noise because i want it to be very subtle but still have some texture if i would use the regular airbrush it would kill the texture that i have very carefully put in my character Instead of that, the airbrush noise makes sure that I still have a little bit of that nice texture just coming across. I am switching now to the regular airbrush, but this time to use for an eraser. For now, I want to be very subtle with this effect. And in this same layer, I can add the color variation for the eyes and the lips. For that, I think that I'm going to go back to this LP dry square. The reason is because this one can behave a lot of times like a very textury airbrush if I use it with very low opacity. I'm going to add some cold color right here under the eyes. So that the character looks more tired and right here some lighter color for the eyes themselves just be very careful to not use pure white for this part and now a little bit more red for the ears and maybe the nose and you can see the difference this is before and this is after you can see how the colors look much more realistic and interesting when the skin has some color variation. This is one of my favorite parts out of the whole process because if you would want, you can leave the whole character just as it is. You can grab the line art and duplicate it, for example, to make it a little bit darker and add some darker color to it. And you can see how very easily you could leave this drawing as it is and you just have a solid drawing holding some basic colors. Something that would definitely improve this is a layer of shadow. So that is the, th the next thing that we are going to do. We are going to add the shadow of our character, or if you would prefer also, and you painted the colors of your character very dark, now you would be painting the light. But in my case, as you can see, if I put this in black and white, our character is very light, so we are going to be painting the shadow. But before that, it is time for me to do some organization with the layers because having a mess in my layers is not very good for productivity. Okay. 
something that you can do to so that you can paint the l something that you can do so that you paint those shadows in the best way possible is for you to analyze the reference a lot of times we just go into the painting without thinking what we're doing and that can lead to mistakes so i want you to take a moment and analyze what is happening in the reference doing that is very simple you just go in here and try to find where are the light sources coming from and what is the temperature of the colors. So for example, here we have a source of light that is coming very strong from behind the character and it is yellow. And it looks like from this other side we have a bigger source of light that is softer and it is just showering this whole side, all his upper side, in this very cool light. Another cool thing that we can do, at least here in Photoshop, is that you can go to the adjustments down here and add this threshold. And if you play with the settings, you're going to see exactly where the darkest spots of your portrait are going to be. This is an excellent tool for you to discover where are you going to paint the shadow. So you see, if I paint it here, you're going to draw all the shadow around his eyes and on this side of the beard. But if we move it a little bit to this side, you're going to see that it's, uh, it gives you a much more dramatic effect with both eyes in shadow and just the tip of the nose in light. I think that this is the one that I like the most, so I am going to use it for the shadows of my character. I can even copy this, eliminate the layer and use this as a reference for how to paint the shadows. About which layer mode to use and all of this, it's gonna be very simple and the default. I am just going to create a new layer above the whole thing and put this one in multiply mode. And about the color of the shadows, that is a question that I get all the time. What color should I use for my multiply shadows? And you know, there is no right answer for that because what is happening is that values are much more important than hue. So it doesn't really matter which color you use. As long as you are making the right structure for the shadow, you're going to have a result that works at least. Now that is a very simplified answer. So in general, if you want to put the right color, I would think of warm colors versus cool colors. Generally, the shadows are going to be the color of the environment of your character. In this case, it looks like the shadows are warmer than the light but we can still try it in our portrait and put something that is a little bit cooler and a little bit warmer and see which one works the best. I think that this in between color that is a very desaturated purple is the one that works the best, at least for now. So let's go ahead and get started painting the shapes of those shadows. For this part of the process, I am going to use the LP Dry Harry. For some reason, this is one of the brushes that I enjoy using the most when it comes to painting shadows. And again, I am going to use the same brush as the eraser to bring the light back. Whenever possible, use the brush as big as you can use it because that will simplify your painting and make it more appealing. Notice that I am not zooming in and painting all of the details of the shadow right here because I want to always, always work from general to specific. If you don't have access to a tool like this threshold right here in Photoshop, all you have to do is look at the reference and squint your eyes. When you squint your eyes, you're going to have a more contrasty version of your image or your reference coming out to you. Yeah. 
Again, this is a very good point for you to just finish your illustration if you would want something that is a bit more drawn. So all you have to do is make your lines a little bit darker and you can see that now you have something that looks much more finished. But we're going to continue working on this to achieve a more painterly or three-dimensional look. If I put this in black and white, you can see how now the illustration works in just two values. We have all of the shadows of our character in one single value and all the lights in another value. What we need now to achieve a more three-dimensional or realistic look is to increase the levels of shadow and light. For example, you can see that all of this area of our character is not quite in shadow and not quite in light. So this is the part of the painting that we call the half tones or the half shadows and we still need to paint them. There are many ways for you to paint these type of effects but one of the easiest ones is to use still the multiply layer. I'm gonna put it back in normal mode so that we can sample the original color and I'm gonna put it right here. Kind of like a reminder so that I can sample the color if I need to. Now we can go back to multiply mode and select a bit of a lighter color that will act as that half light half shadow. We could be painting this on a new layer but I am gonna paint it right here because I want to keep things simple and without that many layers. We can go back to this reference circle and make sure that we have both swatches right here in case that we need to sample them. Something that I really like about this dry hair if brush is that it has some bristliness to it. That means that it matters in which direction I make my strokes. So for example, for a round shape like this one that we have here for his shoulder, I can use these type of strokes and that is going to help me to describe a three-dimensional shape in my character. We have now the middle shadows and the light shadows. If your guess is that now we're going to do the darker shadows, then you were right. I'm going to select the middle color of the shadow and I'm going to go down in the value and also make it a tiny bit more saturated. And I think this is going to be the right color for me to start painting those dark, dark shadows. Just because I don't want to mess up, I'm going to create a new layer and put it again in multiply. Scratch that, I'm going to be using the same layer as we had before. Now finally we have some detail work to do, so I'm going to be a bit more careful and I'm going to be using a smaller brush. To get all of those tiny shapes. Alright, so for now the shadows are looking good, now I'm gonna create a new layer and now we are gonna paint the light that is coming from the left side of the camera. This bright yellow light that is very overexposed. There are many layer modes that you can use to paint light, but my favorite out of all of them is this screen mode. For this one I'm not going to be using this 
LP Dry Carry because it gives me a softer result. I want something with a little bit more grain. So I'm gonna go back to this dry flat and use the grain that it has to create the transition between the light and shadow. You can use the same texture from the brush to create this little dapple effect of some hairs being in light and some in shadow without having to paint anything. You just take advantage of the texture of the brush. I'm gonna now use the dry square to make a softer, softer transition right here where you have a rounder shape on his head. There are some parts of the shadow that I think they are a bit too harsh. So I'm gonna select the airbrush and I'm gonna use it as an eraser to go and soften those areas of the shadow. And I think that this would be a good moment for us to darken the background of our character because now I notice that it's just a tiny bit too bright, the one that we drew. So I'm gonna grab this nice LP dry knife and go and flatten those colors so that the character stands out. Something happened right now that I am not liking what I did with the shadows. So what I'm gonna do is try to change the color and see if that is what's gonna fix it. Okay, so this was before and this is after. I ended up making all of them a little bit lighter because it was way too dark. It felt too realistic and I wasn't a big fan of how it was looking. So let's go with this one. To play a bit with the colors, I can also come in here and try to change the color of the line art. Lately, I have been liking how the colors of the line art look when they are like this very saturated orange. All right, great. So now that we have a good base, the only thing that I'm missing is really those dark, dark spots that happen here and there. Like for example, right here, or right here. These type of dark darks are very important to have and I'm gonna try to capture them just with one single layer in multiply mode and see how it goes if I use something from the fine category. That is going to let me make these marks a bit more delicately. I'm definitely going to use that for the eyes. Another important parts like this shadow right here next to his nose. I'm gonna flip the canvas and see how we are. All 
Okay, I like how the portrait is looking. So I think I am going to make a new group with all of these guys. So I'm going to leave all the layers right here in another group. And this guy right here, I am going to fuse into one single layer. So I'm going to grab all of these guys, maybe even the background, and I'm going to fuse it. I'm going to get rid of these swatches and these drawings, and I'm going to be using this guy as the base for me to paint directly with opaque colors. If I would be using Procreate or Clip Studio Paint, in this part of the painting I would be using something like the wet oil because it has some very nice way of mixing the colors. But for this part, I think I'm going to be using instead this dry wash, just because I'm working in Photoshop. And what I want to do in this part of the painting is slowly start covering areas of the line art with painting, but also start to add some more maybe nuances of color and value here and there that we couldn't add before. So I'm going to be working far away for now and then slowly, slowly I'm going to get closer to the canvas and painting more details. For example, grabbing in here the stone of skin and adapting the color and making sure that there is a variation of value right there. and increasing the contrast in some areas like right here. Now that I think about it, maybe I will be using the wet oil just because the dry wash has a bit too much texture for my taste right now. And as usually happens, I am back with my dry knife. At the end of the day, even if we have 50 very nice brushes in here, you end up getting used to some of them and making them your favorites. And right now, this dry knife is the one that I use for most of my paintings. You can see how slowly we are building a more three-dimensional look. And that is the whole point. And we can continue polishing this until it looks completely three-dimensional. But that is not my intention. Hopefully, I don't go overboard and make this thing look a little bit too realistic. Because I personally don't like very much that style. So knowing when to stop, it is actually very important also. You can see that now I am working with a dry block and again you will see me jumping from tool to tool during this whole process just trying to get a variety of textures and strokes and just something that feels good with the uh, painting. There is no science here it is more like going with your gut and 
making sure that you're enjoying the process. This is actually the most relaxing part of the whole painting because you have solved everything. Now you're here just enjoying yourself and making something that looks pretty. So for this part, I'm gonna leave you guys with the recording of me painting this thing and I will see you guys at the end of the process. And now that we have our very sketchy paint done, it is time for us to maybe play a little bit with this other pack that is called the LP Traditionalizer. For all of you that got the LP painting brushes when they were releasing, you have also access to the LP Traditionalizer. And for all of you that don't know what it is, it is very simple. It is a pack of textures and brushes that is gonna help you to accomplish a very traditional looking look in your illustrations super super easy. Here in Photoshop it is especially effective because you can use it together with the patterns from Photoshop. And it is as simple as grabbing one of these patterns and just throwing it inside your illustration. You have 10 surfaces that you can put in things like multiply mode to add a little bit of texture and then you have my favorite part which is this beautiful overlays that you can throw in there also and once you put them in overlay mode they do an excellent excellent job to add some texture to your illustration so I'm just gonna add a couple of these guys see something that suits the illustration and because these guys are seamless the beautiful part is that you can just grab them and put them wherever you want, scale them however you want, rotate them, and they're gonna preserve all the quality because you are using seamless patterns of very high resolution. I think I'm gonna go with this pattern right here. And now the next step is for me to add some textures with the brushes that come with the pack. I will use these traditional strokes to remove some of the color and maybe add some variation to the opacity of the colors here and there. I'm 
And now I'm gonna use this distress, traditional distress, to add some scoffing and damage on the painting. We can also try to add some of these cracks around the painting, but I think that it is a bit too much. This is something that you would use more if you want to have an effect of like very old oil painting that is cracking already in the borders. So for my painting that it is just little more than a, than a sketch, I think that I'm not gonna use these textures. And there you go guys, here's the final result of the little practice of the stylized portrait. I hope that you guys learned something along the process. If you don't have these brushes, you can find them in the link in the description. And if you have these brushes, I hope that you're having fun with them and that this helped to make you understand a little bit of what is my approach at using these brushes. Please make the brushes your own, you're gonna have to discover which ones are your favorite and which ones do you want to use for whatever part, but anyway. Thank you very much guys for watching this video till the end and I will see you on the next one. Bye.